Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Doki Doki Literature Club. Today we're gonna hop back in and you know, maybe something will happen, maybe something won't, I don't know. But we're gonna hop right back into where we left off last time, so let's go ahead and get back in here. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Weren't you practicing piano again? Yeah, <laughs> you must have had a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not only talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of the school where you can get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried, fried squid? <laughs> squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying that you don't like squid? You, of all people? <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like it. I, I'm not a big fan. I don't really like takoyaki. I tried it. And it's not the octopus. It's the fact that it's like uncooked pancake batter inside of it. Uncooked bread. That's what got me. But it tasted really good except for the texture. Besides, what do you mean you're by you of all people? Because it's right in your name, Monica. <laughs> eh? That's not how you pronounce how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Yeah, I was gonna say like in English. What? <laughs> Oh my god. Did you just break the fourth wall? Wait. <laughs> Monica. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I have my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Uh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go over and talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Geez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayuri shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glanced at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed and everyone back at their with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must have been spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Hey, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little bit into too much into this, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm... But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. You certainly know a her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this is the but this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also a friend with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members. You know. Maybe I'll try to talk to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seems like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up in front of the person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you. Me? How on earth would you come to that kind of conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayuri talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light has turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that it's 
than it has always been. You're so funny. Have you thought that maybe you're the you're the always you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I do? Anyway, I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully at me. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like... I'm being- I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Um, let's talk- let's talk to Sayori, cause I- I'm worried about her. <laughs> this is your best one so far. It's really, really nice. Thanks. Mmm. Sayori, you've been a little bit quiet today. Is everything alright? Of course! Everything is fine! Maybe I'm just a little tired today. Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing poems like the way Yuri does, or even like Natsuki, but in the end, yeah, I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't- you don't want to get closer with everyone else? Why did the music stop? I don't like how it abruptly stopped. Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have some I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one excite you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? No. Um I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Girl, where are you going? <laughs> Natsuki, okay. Finally. This one, it's good. I was wondering how long it would take you. Alright? Yeah, seriously. Don't listen to what anyone else says, especially Yuri. I just keep writing poems like this. That's all you need. Uh, are you sure that's not what you want? Excuse me. You're talking to a pro, you know. Don't you think you should trust my opinion the most? I guess that depends. Aren't you biased towards the poems that are more simple and cute? Biased? Of course not. My opinions just happen to be the best. There's one thing I still can't tell. Is Natsuki actually self-aware of her spoiled behavior? At this rate, I don't know if I'll ever figure it out. Fair enough. I'm glad that you like my poem after all. <laughs> I knew you'd finally understand. Just keep showing me your poems and you'll be a pro before you know it. Anyway, here's the one I wrote. Oh, wait. Sayuri didn't even show us our poem. I'm worried about her, okay? 
I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminishes your wonders over the years. But today, I have a special place, a beach for us to go to. The shore reaching behind your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. Uh, where was I at? <laughs> I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that your daydream can that you can daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought you had left that had left you long ago. Let's bury our heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in salty water and let me see you shine. Let's leave your leave your memories in a footprint trail. You set you free in my windy sail and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach will be your own escape. You'll learn to love yourself again. That's a lot different from what she usually writes. I felt like I... I felt like I keep writing about negative things, so I went to write something nice, a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first, then came up with the message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized, we kind of wrote about the same thing. She wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Ugh, can you really see her doing that too? Making us write about a simple topic than having to impress me by coming up with something all fancy? Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was a good practice. Okay, let's go with Yuri next. Ah, decided to try something different today. I guess so. Is that good or bad? Well, neither. I have my preferences, but it would be unfair of me to call something good or bad based on that. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Huh? Why me? Well, because you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome, how unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it out to sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to the sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked? Yuri, what? What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. All right, do you want to share your poem now? Okay, here. Beach, oh my god, they both wrote about the beach. Okay, okay, let's see if their poems are similar. Can I read? Oh my god. Yuri's handwriting. I can read cursive. It's not really cursive, but just the way it looks, it's so hard to read. Uh, a marvel a millions of years. Is that some marvel? A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface under a clean blue sky and expanse of bliss but beautiful gray rolling clouds and endless enigma the easiest would the easiest wood to get lost in is one where everything can be found one can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet but where the sand is wet the tide comes Will it gently lick at you, found your foundations, until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in a blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore, drift forward, and I return to the earth forevermore. What? <laughs> um, 
I'm aware that the beach is kind of like an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about that. She- she did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought process. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she wanted to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have any particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to stay calm, to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, Monica. Hey, have you thought about what you want to submit for the poem or submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of performing in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> I'll have to take some time to give it more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take my poem and I'm holding I'd let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other's every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together re lately, haven't you? Uh, I guess you could say that. Though we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing... Um, as much I haven't been seeing as much of her this past year, but since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me about how Sayori's been a little bit off today. Yeah, did she tell you something? Uh, well, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. All right, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sayori's been acting so much happier ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Alright. The lady who knows everything. An old lady t an old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meanings, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the recurrence of the wind, day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist, but when all else has failed me when all others have turned away the legend is all that remains the last dim star glimmering in the twilight scar sky, sky. <laughs> until the day it, the wind ceases to blow i fall and i fall and i fall and i fall even more gentle as a feather and dry quill expressionless but a hand catches me between the thumb and the forefinger the hand of a beautiful lady i look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze the lady who knows everything who knows what i'm thinking before i can speak she responds in a hollowed voice i have found every answer all of which amount to nothing there is no meaning there is no purpose and we seek only the impossible i am not your legend we your legend does not exist and with a breath she blows me back afloat and i pick up a gust of wind a pretty teep you know I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing that I noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? To be fair, most poems are about, like, you know, deeper meanings and stuff. Like, I'm a literature kid. I would be in this club. Like, I was AP English student. Like, I had very high marks in school for English. And I had to write a lot of poetry. And it's just easier to write about, like, experiences that weren't so happy, you know? I feel like it's easier to, like, put more meaning into it. Make it deeper, you know? Humans who... 
humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone else. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you even... Are, uh, are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you what you're writing, that your writing is cool, or okay, or bad, they'll want you to focus more on everything that went into it, and then you can work on. And things you can work on. <laughs> It much be, eh, it much be, she says. <laughs> it's, it's much more encouraging that way. It will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Stagnating air is, is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Oh my god. <laughs> no. In your books, maybe. Look, the only difference, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck does she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. She wasn't actually feeling good, so she went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously, all of the times to not, all the times to not go home with her. You pick the time when she's not feeling well. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's the, she's been kind of avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Who? That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me with them. Or design them. And for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? Now that Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, I, I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayuri enough credit, but... I can tell when things are harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that might be the case, but if I can also be the le if I can't also be the leader of my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make some banners and decorations to set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you. The one thing... The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both you and Natsuki... Wait. <laughs> both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciated of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a situation like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's nothing like Monica's going to give me a chance, and shouldn't you be sitting on your and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway? Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um. If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle baking on your own. 
they might not like to be around you if you only make fun of him to be a nuisance. So therefore, he might be more suited to assisting me with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for them too. What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work, and baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up for them to decide how he'd feel to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said. I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Who... Uh, you're okay with this, right? <laughs> In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Huh. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm going to go... I'm gonna go with Sayori, because I feel bad for her. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I'm going with Sayori, because you three are just too pushy. I mean, I would have went with Monica, <laughs> but um, I want to go with Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. <laughs> I can't go with Sayori. Okay, well, I'm going with Monica. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me. Hold on one second. Yeah, oh... They're mad. They're getting mad. <laughs> Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. <laughs> but I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already the most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayuri as well. But they were the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You're the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You shouldn't... You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't have ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this would haven't made it in this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do good job if you keep making us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. It's technically most logical for them to help the two of you, so I guess that's what we'll do. Yuri! <laughs> well, I'm not- Sorry, Natsuki. I prefer- I prefer- <laughs> Her. <laughs> well, I'm probably the most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. No. I was just saying- Ugh. So you'll still be helping Yuri? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking situation by yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is everything we needed to get over? To do over? <laughs> yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a bit. Do you feel the same way? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it all turn out. That sounds good enough to me. What about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why they picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They really go well with my tea. And nothing I do for the event will even compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I... I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. And when she has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up 
must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I began to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work properly, uh, perfectly, I can tell that she's tried... I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making such a big deal out of nothing, but I'm going to say this. You better be happy. You better, you better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, I turn around. Sorry, I realized that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way. Yes, I see that smile. I see you smiling. All right, then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Uh-huh. My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going over to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter that much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. <laughs> I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't think I actually did that, do you? I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason that you might have chosen me. You're forgetting that you're the reason- <laughs> You're forgetting the one reason with the most- What? You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. Okay, I chose to help you because that's what I wanted to do. But Yuri thinks to herself in an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out where you're overthinking, right? Uh, I didn't realize I'm telling you I want to. That's the all there is to it. Do you believe me? I, Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long time. I believe you, as if it took her tremendous elf. Uh, effort. Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way to the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri is coming over to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might happen when we're outside of school. She even told me that she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself that there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate, in, intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we have been texting over occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard anything from Sayori since she left the club the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between about what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to text Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it out of habit just to enter each other's houses, like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already... 
It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Oh my god. <laughs> Hi! I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has changed, has it? Sayori's room is a messy as always. <laughs> I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I ended up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? <laughs> Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me, it's only natu natural for her to keep me informed about the festive festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep, there's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing, after you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well, so... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good. Huh? Why can't it just be like this? It's Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this, this is my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think, what, I think that's what the world has decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something's happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, but you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm so late to school every day? Because most days, I can't find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know I'm, how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put energy and put their energy and caring in caring? to waste by having them spend it on me. That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayuri kept me from this the entire time I've known her? Did she really want me so badly to not think about her? Why? Sayori? Uh, why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if it was only so much I could do. I would have tried a bit harder to make uh, every day better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you have to do is tell me. You don't understand at all. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have then you would have had to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it, al but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> that's, why I wanted so that's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then... I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a sphere going through my heart. So, that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right. That I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that can could have helped is if er everything could be like it always was. 
but I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I punished you by... And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. Now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I don't... I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once agra again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, uh, Sayori... I don't care if you feel selfish. I really am happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. So, if I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. I, Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have, if, if you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make those feelings go away, and if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings. The only thing- the only time I'm feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets go of me. She- as she does so, I let go of her as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like it for me to spend the day with you? Um, uh, that's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayuri wipes her tears. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and hang out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I just don't know that it would be really good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. See you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is coming over too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be too wor- too- I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. Okay, so that's where I'm going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. We've learned a lot about Sayori, but if you are excited for the next episode, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!